Peter Gibbons is an unmotivated computer programmer working for a company called Inatech. He has several work colleagues like Michael and Samir, who he's fairly close to, as well as a couple others like Milton, who is timid and very, very shy. He has not one, but several different bosses that constantly hound him and oversight every minute detail of things he does wrong. And he deals with the daily grind of working non-stop at this company. One day Peter is taken to a hypnotist named Dr. Swanson, who wants to help him break that mold of constantly hating every facet of his life and wanting to change it by being nothing but calm and purely relaxed by starting up a hypnotism session. But unfortunately, or fortunately, in the middle of giving this hypnotism, Dr. Swanson suddenly dies, forcing Peter to permanently be stuck in a state of constant euphoria and uncaringness, giving him a motivation that he never once had. And as we experience Peter's sudden shift into the uncaring and relaxed version that we see, it raises the question, why does stagnation need to be broken? As we see at the beginning of the movie, each of the characters arrive to the office in different ways. As long as they arrive, it doesn't really matter. They're all going to the same place, though. To the daily grind of the same job over and over again for who knows how long. This is what is known as stagnation. The reoccurring things that happen over and over again in a repetition that just get you from day to day. And as we can see, Peter has started to become sick of it, but his own inability of actions is kind of preventing him from doing that. But that same repetition is also a security blanket for some of the other people around him. Michael and Samir, his two friends, just, yes, are frustrated, but they're just kind of like, okay, we're here, let's enjoy what we do, let's just do what we do, who cares? Milton just wants to be involved, and even though he's very timid and shy and doesn't really talk very eloquently to others he just does his job and nothing more whereas tom an older member of the staff he needs this job this is his life he needs to be here it's the only thing he really has in his life besides his marriage and then there's bill lumberg one of the many bosses but the main focal boss of this story the one who breaks down the characters, the one who systematically is able to dissect people, but do it in a way that he doesn't come off as horrible, but he doesn't come off as kind either. Many of us, almost all of us, know a Bill. We know a person who can just dissect us and just get under our skin without even realizing they're doing it. But as Peter notices the repetition, he just needs a break, even though he just got there. And so he goes to something that's somewhat of a sanctuary to him. A minor calm in the storm, as it were. And he goes to this restaurant where he sees a waitress that he really likes, named Joanna. And she will play a significant role in Peter's life later on, but as she is now, she's just a minor crush a what if but this is the daily grind that peter has to face constantly this is all peter knows and it's all it's going to be until changed otherwise as peter gets home he talks to his neighbor lawrence lawrence has the fortune of being basically freelance he doesn't have to deal with the daily grind he's a construction worker who works for various jobs various companies and yes it's hard physical labor but he has the peace of mind of peaceful tranquility of himself he doesn't have a boss so to speak in the sense that peter does and in the same way peter has less physical labor but he has more of a mental toll whereas lawrence has more of a physical labor and less of a mental toll so this balance between them is very similar in parallel but the way michael and samir are they're overwhelmed by the little minute things that are major inconveniences in their jobs such as the printer not working as a reoccurring theme or things like how they constantly mistake michael bolton the main guy for the singer michael bolton and assume because they have the same name that clearly he must be a fan of his even though the name is purely coincidental and in fact michael actually hates michael bolton after a while the people no longer are people they're just numbers 
Their names are less of their identities than the things that they can be used for. But all of this changes for Peter. When he goes and sits with Dr. Swanson, Dr. Swanson gives him that. He gives him the tools to be calm in the storm. And the funny thing is, it works perfectly. Unfortunately, it has some ramifications for those around him. Peter, having now broken through and showing his true, uncaring self, has no restrictions, has no actual things reversing his decision-making. He sleeps in. He doesn't go to work at all. And he just doesn't care. Peter, using this newfound confidence, finally asks out the girl he always wanted to, Joanna. And over time, they hit it off really, really well. He goes into the place to talk to... The Bobs, these people that are actually planning to fire so many people. People that Peter knows and affect their livelihood, but they don't care. Because it's just their job, just as the same way as their jobs are expendable, so too are the Bobs. But Peter just tells them the truth, the unfiltered, straightforward truth. And somehow through his brutal honesty, he's able to relate to the bobs the bobs connect to him better than anyone he tells them that he has eight separate bosses he tells him that he hates his job he mostly blanks out at work and that he really just has no motivation because the only motivation that he has is the fear of losing his job but as he states that can only push you so far and it's true that stagnation can only really keep you going for so long and there should be a motivation to something and they incite him with a proposal of giving him a promotion which is absurd when you think about it i mean peter barely does his job as he freely admits and yet he's rewarded for barely doing his job but then you look at some of his other co-workers and they work really hard but they're not rewarded but it doesn't matter it shows the bias within the workspace it shows this thing of getting to what you want more by how you act than who you are if you stand out a little bit you're more likely to sustain employment and likability. Peter's life is going fantastically. He's able to create essentially carnage, even going fishing and de-gutting a fish and throwing it out and just being there on the TPS reports that he's constantly hounded about or breaking down the cubicle or him not wearing business clothes, him wearing casual clothes. Things that would be normally frowned upon in write-ups are rewarded because his mindset has changed and subsequently him being the change has somehow shifted the office environment for every positive happening to him those negative qualities have to go somewhere the most iconic character of the movie office space and subsequently the character that inspired the entire movie is milton milton was essentially a every day do your job keep quiet just do what you're told don't think character of realistically he's the perfect employee but because he's the perfect employee essentially he has no personality his timidness is his personality and because of that he gets abused constantly by the higher-ups he gets stepped on because he doesn't matter especially by bill lumberg going from just working there to not getting paid to moving offices to all the way moving downstairs and it just keeps getting worse for milton it's funny because it's so sad it's sad because it's so relatable we sit here and watch as milton gets mistreated and we think what if that were us what if that is us what if we are doing that right now and then we look at tom we also experience things like tom being overly afraid of keeping his job and needing his job pleading with the bobs trying to justify his job even though his job is irrelevant but he wants to keep it because he needs the job and he almost screams at them both of these things are two sides of the same coin in the sense of they are the work as it is as a whole people can be a different version of themselves in the workspace but some people in the workspace show their true colors more often than not they do whether they know it or not 
Peter unfortunately finds out the burden of knowing his two friends, even though they did nothing wrong, even though they're doing their job fantastically because they don't stand out because they don't stick up for themselves and because essentially they don't matter. They're being terminated and Peter is left with the knowledge of knowing that and tells them because they're his friends and they matter to him. And so they have a plan together to use a computer program to take little cents every year, put it into a bank account, and eventually become rich slowly over time. And unfortunately, Peter's also starting to wear off from his euphoria and is slowly starting to revert back to himself. And this leads us close to the crescendo of the film. Peter and the gang are invited to Tom's party. A party that is happening because even though Tom was on the precipice of being fired, was through a series of events of attempted suicide leading into a car accident, allowing him to essentially retire without retiring, even though he's unfortunately in a wheelchair and <laughs> very, very, very injured. He's also able to jumpstart his dream. He had the concept of an idea that he wanted to do called a jump to conclusions board, which sounded ridiculous and stupid to the boys, but he was able to accomplish it. And he's actually finally happy, all things considered. And at the same time, Peter, who was euphoric, is suddenly shaken when he finds out that his girlfriend may have slept with his toxic boss, Bill Lumberg. And that visual of the woman he loves being with the man he hates more than anything breaks him and makes him distrust her and not want to be around her. As things progressively get worse, the program that Michael created is no longer taking a few cents at a time. It is now taking hundreds of thousands of dollars and putting it into an account from the company, making a minor blip that they wouldn't notice into a gigantic spotlight that the company is starting to notice. Michael and Samir, who at the end of the day were just doing their job and just frustrated with doing what they were doing on a constant basis, just like Peter was, don't know what to do. But Peter makes the ultimate sacrifice and writes a letter explaining everything that happened with a check for the full amount, closing the bank account, and taking himself as the blame, slipping the note underneath the office of Bill Lumberg after he had already left. And even though he instantly regrets it and tries to get it back, he is unable to. But little does he or anyone else know that fate would intervene. Fate in the hands of Milton, a person who was so insignificant that everyone forgot about him. They didn't invite him to Tom's party. They didn't invite him to have a piece of cake during an office birthday party, even though everyone had a piece. He was mistreated. He was disrespected. He didn't matter. He was essentially, in every conceivable way, a nobody. He was easily able to walk into Bill's office and set the building on fire and walk out just as easily as he walked in. His not mattering became a virtue, no longer becoming a burden. He didn't matter. With the story concluding with Michael and Samir in another tech company doing exactly what they did. No better, no worse. Peter no longer working for that company and instead working for the construction company that Lawrence worked for. Because despite Lawrence not having what Peter had, he was happy. Yes, he had to take a physical toll, but the mental positives outweighed everything, which is the only thing Peter ever wanted. He rekindled his relationship with Joanna, and at the very end of the movie, Milton is on the beach, enjoying a Mai Tai, but <laughs> even though the staff don't really care that what he needs is a specific kind of Mai Tai or mojito, he's happy because that final check that Peter gave actually became Milton's to cash. And so the story ends with Peter happy, Michael and Samir happy, Milton happy, and Tom happy. Our characters who were miserable are now right where they should be. So, why does stagnation need to be broken? I think if you look at the story as a whole, it's less to do about work and more to do with the experiences, reactions, and perceptions that we have about each other at the workplace. 
The one overarching common theme is that none of the main characters really enjoyed their lot in life. They didn't like the stagnation, the recurring things that happen over and over, day in and day out, which we all can relate to. None of us really like working at our jobs or working Especially if you do an office cubicle job, you have to deal with the same things over and over again. And no, we can't react like Peter as much as we'd like to and say screw our fiscal responsibilities or our personal lives. But we do have abilities within ourselves to find some sort of things that can change or tweak our modifications of how we perceive it. Things that we do that could kind of change our work habits. Ways that we can project ourselves, ways that we can act or let it affect us in a way that it won't feel repetitive, that it won't feel like you want to just kick in the door and never come back. Or sometimes we do just need to leave. Sometimes we put in our best efforts like Milton and we get grinded down so hard that now, I'm not saying you have to set the building on fire, but you need to make a sudden and dramatic shift. You need to get out of the toxicity because it will overwhelm and consume you. And sometimes approaching those questions and those solutions on your own can be the first step to getting out of stagnation. Breaking that mold is so important because you lose your humanity. You lose what made your individuality so important to you. What makes you different from the people that were here before or the people that come after you. Because the main goal of breaking stagnation is to keep one's own individuality and to matter. Because if this is all you have, why not use it and make the most of it? But in the end, these aren't answers. They're hypotheticals. Alone. But why? Yes. Because that's the way it's done. Well, if that is the way it is done, then that is the way you must do it. Fencing, fighting, torture, revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, miracles. He has suffered with you. He went through everything you went through. And now, he has come here. With you, he is very close, listening to every word we say. <laughs>